because those because those because the whole entire purpose of this is to go ahead and give a trend that's what you're doing you're trying to denote some sort of trend when people look at these pictures they're seeing all those up and um they're seeing all those they're seeing all those up and down um all those up and down sort of messages um that's because like i said that's because that's because they're looking for a trend so what you want to do is you want to typically look at this and you want to you want to typically look at this and you want to say okay you know what i want to choose like every week maybe every monday i see a label every monday i see a label every monday i see a label now they can still see all the bars but the idea is that you put labels by certain bars and their eyes will fix to that naturally so in this particular case very helpful tip over here if you want to be able to fix them to certain sorts of labels because if you put too many on the x-axis it'll look cluttered and users will then have trouble dissecting it so in order to be able to handle this what you do is you come down over here and first these are your axes options right over there okay now what you got over here is you've got you've got axis range and interval where you can choose okay how often do i want to allow for some sort of label to appear now in this interval you see over here it's got auto right now which which lets the system actually select it in this case it selected everything instead click fx and now change it over here from zero every one to three so what you're saying now is for every single one i want three to actually be the interval and now click ok and now i'm gonna click ok for just a moment to show what it did and then i'm gonna click run And you see over here, there's one, two, three bars, bam, there's one. One, two, three bars, there's another. One, two, three bars, there's another. So you guys see what you've done is you've actually adjusted it that way. So then you've actually adjusted it to just show every third interval because there wouldn't have been enough space to show every single one. Or maybe you don't want to show every one because you want to emphasize like, oh, look at that. The first of every week is what I look at and your users will look at that and they'll, they'll look for trends that sort of way naturally. Here you can see this is all up and down, this particular sales, right? And you can see what's going down, up, up, down, you name it, um, which is still very helpful for users to be able to diagnose. Okay, now the next thing we need to do though is we need to change this ugly stuff right over here. Right now the labels are appearing all spread out, which doesn't look like they're matching the third one. We need to get them to actually match. So let's see how we do that. So I click design again, and I'm going to click back on my horizontal axes, right click on it. Then after that I'm going to click on horizontal axes properties. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do on this very next one right over here is I need to go ahead and I need to actually turn around and change this. So I'm going to click on labels and try to make those labels look a lot better. Now, I've got the labels right now, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable auto fit. So auto fit was where it tried to fit the labels in the way that it best saw. I'm going to instead overrule that and choose myself. Now, what I'm going to do next is when I finish doing that, I'm going to come down and watch this just so you guys can see this moving the mouse over hopefully everybody can see this over here I'll move it over here up like that there we go I want you to look at the horizontal axis and watch how it rotates when I choose to rotate rotate it I can rotate it clockwise or counterclockwise so you guys see over here now I'm going counterclockwise right when I go negative and I'm choosing to go counterclockwise for the rotate so originally it starts from left to right right and what I'm saying is I um, by going counterclockwise I wanted to take the thing that was um, the letter that was on the left and if I go negative 90, I want that to be on the bottom. If I go clockwise, I want the letter on the right to be on the bottom instead. So let me go clockwise just to show an example. So there we go over here. And you guys can see now there's, now I'm actually going clockwise over here. So I can choose to rotate it clockwise or counterclockwise right over there. Disable auto fit and then change the rotation angle. Now that is extremely helpful because again, that now allows me to get more clean. So in this case, it wanted us to actually do counterclockwise. It's just making a point here. So I'm going to change this to negative 90 and bring it back up real quick and click back to labels real quick and there, there's negative 90 over there. So I'll click OK. Now I'm going to turn around and click run. And now you can actually see it right over there. So now that looks a lot more clean. That matches the third one right over there. And of course we could have added highlighting, whatever we wanted to to it, you name it but that makes it a lot more clear a lot more clean so that looks that looks significantly better okay now i'm going to come back to the design view all right now i'm back in the design view at this stage and what i want to do next is i want to go ahead and actually i want to go ahead at this point and i want to actually change the layout a little bit right so i can actually change the layout if i want to of a particular legend so what i'm gonna do first is i'm gonna come down 
and click on the legend. Now, a lot of times, sometimes we don't need legends, especially if we have something in the title. Sometimes there's no benefit. Sometimes there's no benefit of the legend at all. And so we've got this layout with this legend at this stage, and we're looking at it, but we're like, you know what? What if I just put it in a title like sales by such and such? Then I wouldn't even need a legend. That's true. The cases where you need legends are are typically where you've got multiple different members. Then you usually need a legend. But when you've just got one member, like sales is it, and you guys can all see over here, this is sales by sales date. No need to go ahead and add extra space of a legend. So just right click on the legend right over there and click on delete legend. Now that gives us more space within this area and you guys can all see that over here. So let me click run. And you can see now where we've got more space over here. So we could have even made this a little more compact if we needed to by deleting the legend. We'll, we'll eventually throw that legend um, information inside of the title instead. So let me click design. And remember, we can get away with that because our legend only had one item, was only measuring one thing, and that was sales. When multiple things, then it's, um, it's more difficult to do that. So here I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on store, sales, order, totals. Not titles, sorry about that. So there's totals right over there, and then I'm going to click run. Okay, there, you can actually see it. Store, sales, order, totals right over there. So now we've actually got a title over there which tells us this is actually measuring sales right over here. You can see that right inside the title. Very handy. All right, now, the next thing we've got is we've got this vertical axis, but you see, here's the thing. We're actually, we're actually measuring sales at this point, so we need to format our vertical axes so that our vertical axes will actually show currency and then probably throw in something that includes some sort of decimal place or whatever. Um, typically, especially if we're measuring some sort of big number, something that's more clear like thousands or something like that, where we, where we hack off three of those zeros or something. So I'm going to click on first the vertical axis. Got to get on the vertical axis, so just I, I keep clicking on the left until I get that little square right up like that. That's what I'm looking for at the moment. Then what I'm going to do is if I right click over here, I'm going to click on left click on vertical axis properties. Now, in your instructions, they have, the de they have the decrease decimal and the increase decimal over here, and then you click on the axes properties. Um, I'm going to slightly do that differently. We did this inside of a previous module, so if you guys are watching this for the very first time, make sure you watch the first modules um, where we actually played around with that and decreased and increased. This is equivalent, as most of you will know who've been watching these um, tutorials up until this point. All right, now, we've got our vertical axes over here, right? And I'm going um, to click on number. Now I'm going to go ahead and choose currency at this particular point. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the decimal places to zero. So I actually changed the decimal places to zero over there. Finally, there's something that's asking me something over here, which is, which is actually show values in thousands or whatever. That's what I'm going to click on eventually, but not yet. Let me click OK first. And let's look at what our report looks like. Okay, right now we have 60,000, 80,000, 100,000, right? Accountants oftentimes like to look at things in thousands, especially for big companies that have multiple, you know, huge sales, right? So what we probably need to do is we need to go ahead and change this and knock off three of those places, essentially. And then everyone just understand that this is in thousands, essentially, because we can change the title or something of them, of the report. So I'm going to click design to do that. Then once I finish doing that, I'm going to click over here, click inside again until I get that little square up right click on it and then click on vertical axis properties now what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on number right over here and then i'm going to put show values in and you guys see those are thousands and i could even go further i can make it millions or billions depending upon how big the figure is as far as when chopping off zeros but i'll just chop off three zeros in this particular case then i'll click ok now i'm going to turn around and click run again and you guys see over there 0 20 40 60 80 100 much cleaner, much smaller. Then I'm going to come back and click on design. And on design, what I'm going to do over here is um, I'm going to actually change this just a little bit. So change this actual, um, I'm going to change this actual value over here. Instead of store sales order totals right over here, I'm going to put, I'm going to put um, sales totals in thousands. So just change this over here. So you guys see this over here, sales total, and then in thousands. And it's one of those things that's pretty self-explanatory as far as this chart. You can see the day, you can see the actual part. So you can see over here, okay, these are total sales. So our users can actually tell already that we're looking at sales essentially for, per date, pretty easily. There's date, there's actual sales, and users can see it from the numerical figure plus the money. So that, that gives that. So I'll click OK over there, and then I'll click Run. Okay. 
this looks this this is starting to look a lot better now i've just got a few more steps to do over here with that are very important and i'm and i'm done with this one okay so i'm going to come back now and i'm going to click design and one of the things i have is i have axes titles but i'm not using these axes titles i don't need them in this case i don't need one to say sales and i don't need one to say date people can look at it and tell its date just by the column names so if i click on this axes click click there we go until i get until it becomes you know until I get this light, you know, or until I get that little bitty rectangle that tells me the axes, I can right click on it. And you guys see over here, here's a, here are the axes title properties. Now, I could have changed this to center and aligned it. I'm just showing this over here because we're going to delete it in this example. So I could have clicked on all this and went into fonts and whatever else and, and even added um, expressions that we'll talk about later to be able to dynamically, you know, show it. In that case, I don't need to do that, though. I just need to highlight the axes and then I just need to hit the delete key. There we go. Same thing over here. Just need to highlight this axis over here and just click the delete key. So now that expands out and even gives me more space in this particular case. And yes, the way that you title your, 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 your charts can have radical effects on your layout because titling can oftentimes substitute for having to label certain things. So very nice tip to know just from real world type experience on that sort of thing. Now, sometimes our users also need a moving average, right? And we know what a moving average is, essentially, where we're taking an average for every so many days. So what happens is we start at, say, the second day or the third day, right? And we take all three of those days, and every single average is going to essentially involve those three days from point to point to point. And it's always a moving type of three days or whatever else. That's a simple moving average, correct? Um, let me show you what that means over here. So how do we do a simple moving average over there? And, and the reason why we do this, right? Um, is oftentimes to be able to have some sort of, um, to be able to see a trend, but to have some resistance to um, resistance to anomalies, right? So that you actually see the trend itself. So let's see how to do that because this is very easy to do in, inside of SSRS. Okay, once you've got your chart over here, double click on it. Ah, there we go. And, it, and it's gonna show something called the chart data panel right over here. Now what you're gonna do is right click on some cells right over there. And then once you right click on some cells, you're going to click add calculated series. Why? Why is it an add calculated series? It's going to be something that's going to appear on the Y axis. Boom, 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 boom. And it's going to show something else about the data. That's why it's called a calculated series. So you add a new series whenever you want to add something else to display. Like we've already got column bars displaying. Now we're going to throw something else in there too. So I click on add calculated series over here. Now, right off the bat, it's going to ask me, okay, how do I want to do this? And look at all these formulas over here. These are pretty cool. So you can show a whole lot of information just built right inside of this. We're going to choose the moving, moving average, though. We want to see a trend of what the moving average is for sales. A very, very common trend. You name it. Now, there's something called set formula parameters. Let me explain what this is. Um, you guys see this period over here, which means essentially... All, for every single moving average, always average it for two days. So whatever whatever appears over here, this would be the two-day average with this day and this day. Whatever appears, you know, whoops, let me just move this over here. Whatever appears over here would be the two-day average of this day plus this day divided by two. Whatever appears over here would be the two-day average of this day plus this day divided by two. And you guys can see you're using multiple different you're using multiple different periods. As a best practice, you'll typically use these five, seven day averages, whatever else. Usually a two day average would still be very, very susceptible to anomalies, which could make the moving average look very funny on the trend line. But um, typically a five day or whatever else would be would be very good. Sometimes a 30 day. It depends. It depends on what you're using for your chart. All right. So in this particular case, they want us to go ahead for the period and use four. So we're going to have a four day moving average over here. OK. And then, and then once we actually have our, um, once we actually have our four-day moving average, we're going to also go to the border. So we're going to give it some sort of width to basically show it. And this is nice because you're going to see this line come up. We're going to give it a width of three, right over here. Now we could have also changed the color and did some other things over here, but I'm going to leave that alone just to let it be automatic, so the system.